Good evening. It's good to be with you this evening as we worship together on this Ash Wednesday, which is the inaugural worship service in our season of Lent. It is a time for self-reflection, for repentance, for forgiveness, a time when we begin the season of preparation for Easter that we call Lent. I'm glad that you're here, and I want to welcome particularly any of you, any of you who may be visiting with us this evening. We're glad that you chose to be here tonight to worship on this sacred day. I'd like to invite you to stand as you're able, and we'll join together in the call to worship, which is printed in your worship folder, or you can follow along on the screen. Return to God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Return to this season called Lent, a season of fasting and prayer, reflection and introspection. Return Return to yourself and to the treasure that is Christ living within you. Return our souls to you, O God. Turning and returning with heart, mind, and soul wide open, let us worship the God of love. And now I invite you to either turn in the hymnals or follow along on the screen as we sing, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. confession. Our hearts are heavy when we turn away from you. We weep for the sins that separate us from the love and from one another. We mourn for the lost innocence of life gone astray. Lighten our hearts, O God. Cleanse our lives with your mercy, that our hearts may be restored and our lives reclaimed by your bright forgiveness and grace. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now let us join our hearts and minds together for a moment of silent prayer. You may be seated for the prayer.
Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pause to confess our sins before God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The script, first scripture lesson tonight comes from the prophet Joel, chapter 2. Let us hear the words as the prophet proclaims them. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering, for the Lord your God. Blow a trumpet in Zion, sanctify a feast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the people, Where is your God? This is the word of God for the people of God. God. Tonight's offering will be taken and uh, be received and given to our Lenten offering, which will be for Outreach Indiana, who provide uh, social services, safe haven, and assistance for homeless youth and young adults in Indianapolis. You can honor someone special this Lenten season with a gift through St. Mark's Wings of Hope campaign. Honorees will receive an Easter card from St. Mark's acknowledging your special gift. You can visit stmarkscarmel.org slash wings of hope to complete the form online with a minimum donation of $5 per card. And now let us receive our offering to God.
Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And continuing with verse 16. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My friends, in the passage that we just heard, Jesus connects an odd group of directives, doesn't he? He talks about almsgiving or money, He gives us some insight on how we are to pray. And he tells us how we should be and when we should be fasting. He instructs us about storing up treasures in heaven rather than doing that here on earth. And if we kept reading for a little bit, we would have heard Jesus comment on wealth and keeping your eyes healthy. Now, I think it's really worth noting that Jesus didn't begin any of these nuggets of wisdom as if they were options. He didn't say, if you fast, or maybe you should consider giving some alms, or maybe, maybe someday sit down and think about praying. No. Right from the very start, it was assumed that spiritual practices such as fasting and tithing and prayer would be a regular part of our Christian lives. So this day, the beginning of our our Lenten season, is often a really good time to talk about the idea that there are many, many spiritual disciplines that we, as Christ followers, could, or maybe even should, be practicing. But if we let ourselves get hung up on the should, feeling like we need to check off every box for every day, then we're neglecting the real reason for having those spiritual disciplines, to take us closer to Jesus. Consider for just a second fasting as an example. Now, historians generally agree that we can trace the origins of Lent, these 40-day period before Easter, back to one of the earliest Christian councils in Nicaea, and the earliest observances, perhaps even stemming stemming back to the early days of the church, seem to have focused on this practice of fasting. And regardless of the exact origin, it has long been a Lenten discipline of the church. So every Ash Wednesday, we are to choose something that we're going to give up for the season of Lent such as chocolate or coffee, television, not likely, likely. Hmm. or Facebook. (sighs) But then we replace it 
We replace it with something more spiritual. Instead of watching our favorite television show, maybe we choose to get up an hour earlier to have quiet time and meditation with God. Instead of scrolling through Facebook over and over and over again, we spend those extra moments in prayer. Now, none of these things are inherently bad, and none of the practices are inherently bad. They are time-tested spiritual practices that really can deepen our faith. But the problem is when we allow them to become hard and fast rules, and then we don't live up to those rules. Maybe on day number 12, we forget to pray first thing in the morning. Or on day number 26, we oversleep and don't hear the alarm. On day 37, we give in to a miniature Reese's cup. And then what? Our attempt to partake in in some kind of spiritual practice to, to guide us and sustain us and help us live the life that we have been called to live seems to backfire. Suddenly, we feel like we failed. We failed ourselves, or, or worse, we feel like we have failed God. Author Kate Bowler, who is one of my favorite authors, writes, one of the most counterintuitive parts of the Christian tradition is its emphasis on perfection when it doesn't believe in perfection. Jesus alone is perfect. Yet we hear so often that if we would just pray a little harder or attend worship a little more often or give a little bigger tithe, then God will bless us or heal us or reward us. That is not how God works. Now, should we try to practice our spiritual disciplines? Yes. And should we try to increase the consistency of those spiritual disciplines? Absolutely. But we do so knowing that perfection is impossible. And you know what? It's a good thing, too, because we're not striving for perfection. Christ doesn't seek perfection. We are striving for transformation. United Methodist uh, author and pastor James Bryan Smith makes a similar point in one of his books called The The Good and Beautiful God. And in the book he writes, we are ones in whom Christ dwells and delights. The idea that Christ himself, the God of all creation, the God of angel armies, the King of kings and Lord of lords, chooses to take up residency in me is such a hard thing to wrap my mind around as I work through my day to day. He says, as one who has struggled for most of his life with anxiety and fear, I find it so much easier to see myself separate from a holy God, knowing full well that most days I miss the mark of that holiness. How is it that God chooses to live in me Maybe the answer is that God is who God says God is. God speaks over us with the truth of who we are becoming. God sees that finished product and watches us as we transform and become the ones that God made us to be. God's not surprised or worried, sad or disappointed when we screw up. God just smiles and says, come on, we've got this. Now come Easter Sunday, I hope that we definitely find ourselves closer to Jesus than we are right now here on Ash Wednesday. Because indeed, these 40 days can certainly serve to change us as we start a new practice or increase or grow a spiritual discipline. But let's take ourselves off the hook for perfection. Perfect lives, perfect bodies, perfect marriages, perfect friendships. 
take ourselves off the hook for that perfection and simply work towards that transformation and realize that being one in whom Christ dwells is certainly enough. And I say thanks be to God for that. Amen? The early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. And during this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and the forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. So you are invited, therefore, in the name of the church and the tradition, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us humble ourselves before our Creator and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And in just a moment, we will invite you to come forward down the middle aisles, and Pastor Brian and I will be on either side for the imposition of ashes. Just one word of instruction. You will not be dismissed by the ushers, so just come as you are ready. And again, come down the center aisle and return by the side aisles.
Once again, I'd like to invite you to stand as you are led and able and join us in our closing hymn this evening. Uh, you can find it at number 399 in the hymnal or the words will be up on the screen. Take my life and let it be. our time and space together this evening, remember Christ's words and take those with you throughout these upcoming 40 days. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.